Welcome to the fifth lesson of the series on moving averages. In this lesson, we'll introduce you to a trading method based on the crossovers of moving averages. You'll get entry points near the support or resistance area. So our trading system, the goals must be to buy or sell as soon as the signal is generated. And next, you must exit the position as soon as our stop hits or our profit target hits, whichever is earlier. The payoffs of an objective method is that the emotion will be gone from the trading. You will enter and exit trades with discipline, focus and obviously it will be objective. And you'll get about two times reward on successful trades. Now, what that means is that if you're risking, say, 5,000 on a trade, you will aim for two times that. That's 10,000 rupees. Now, there will be more winning trades than losing trades. And you won't be risking more than a small portion of your trading capital, not more than 1%. Developing the right attitude about your trading is most of the work. Once you get that attitude under control, you're going to have many successful trades. Now, the exponential moving averages or the EMAs are the key. They are the core element of this strategy. And from the beginning, you should understand that I have not invented this strategy. There are some tweaks that we've added in, but essentially this information, especially on crossovers, is available freely on the internet. Now let's start with the crossover chart. Above is a 30 minute chart of LIC housing. Now there are two lines of moving averages. One is the 62 period EMA, that's the black line. And the other is the 13 period EMA, that's the blue line. Now you can easily see that when the 13 crosses above the 62, it seems like we are in an uptrend. Whereas when the opposite happens, we are in a downtrending situation. Now the question is, can we just trade crossovers? It's simple, right? When you cross upwards, you buy. When you cross downwards, you sell. You see, there's a problem with crossovers. In a sideways market, well, they suck. They give too many loss trades. So here's a small tweak to adjust for these sideways bad trades. Let's go back to the chart we saw earlier of 30-minute LIC housing. Now, you are looking for crossovers. That's great. But what you really need to look at is that when the market goes close to the support and resistance zone, that is the moving average, we need to close below it. In other words, we need to see selling pressure before we actually sell. Look at this bar over here. It's the third bar on the 19th of October. The market went up close to the moving average and then closed back down. That is when we initiate the trade. As soon as this bar closes, we sell. That's at 482 rupees and 75 pesa. Our stop loss is simple. Keep it at the high of the bar that you shorted, which means your entry, that's 482.75 minus your stop loss is about 95 pesa. Now, 95 pesa is your risk. 95 pesa times three will be your profit target. That is 2 rupees and 85 pesa, which was achieved on the same day. Now, here's an important note. We don't initiate just after a crossover. We wait for the rejection of the candlestick at the resistance area. It's that simple. All right. Now, let's look at the same chart on the 26th of October. We have a good cross under happening, which is bullish. Now, as you know, that's not enough. We need the market to come close to the moving average and then close right back above. And that's what happened on this day. The market came down and then closed right up. That shows buying support. As soon as that candle closes, you buy. And the stop loss, you guessed it, is the low of that current bar. Profit targets are simple. The entry minus the stop loss over here equals about 2.25 rupees. Multiply that by 3 and that's your profit target. In other words, 6.75 rupees from your entry and you would achieve three times your risk in the same day. Not bad at all. If you risked, say, 10,000 rupees, you would have made a little less than 30,000 rupees after accounting for brokerage, slippage and other costs. Let's see some more examples. I like to go to a higher time frame. I think the hourly is a beautiful time frame, as is the daily. Let's look at Z on the hourly chart. You'll see there's a beautiful cross under happening here. The market came down. You got support. That's your entry point. At the same day, this is an intraday trade, despite being hourly, you would have achieved 3x. Your entry would have been at 372.6. The stop loss would have been 370.8. And the target of 3x would have achieved at 378. Achieved in the same day before the markets closed at 2.30 p.m. Not bad. Let's see another chart, the State Bank of India hourly. We have a very clear cross under happening over here. And we have a strong bullish bar, which took support. 
Again, your entry would have been right there. And at a risk of 1.75, you would have made 3x at the target of 247.65. Now we've backtested this method across 30 stocks in various time frames, 15, 30 hourly and daily. It works pretty well. We'll post a backtest report and many more charts marked with the above method in our backtest section of the course. That's all we have for this lesson. I'll see you again next time.